Okay, let's... Hey, stupid. Hey, planet Earth. Uh, let's respond to uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson talking about crystals, uh, endothermic reactions, exothermic reactions. He, he's saying, you know, uh, nuclear, for instance, is an exothermic reaction. He's talking about uh, those, uh, those hand warmers that you can uh, wake up chemically and how, how that's a neat reaction, how chemical reactions are the basis for creating energy. And he is correct. But in a way, in a sort of snarky way, it's as if he had, he had brushed across the advent of the crystal cell battery, uh, thinking that it is totally benign, saying that crystals uh, last in caves for years, uh, saying that crystals don't produce any energy, almost. Uh, he's basically saying that, you know, uh, virtue, virtue signaling that, uh, that crystals are not magical for uh, producing energy. But here, let's not forget, you know. Do you have a molecule? All right. Usually, I, I'm Adam. a molecule has energy contained within it. Usually, I have there energy. This, but let's take one where there's energy there. What that means is if you break apart the molecule, energy is released. See, he's talking about nuclear energy there. We all know about nuclear energy. And uh, in the latest nuclear uh, power plants, they want to uh, cool them with salts again. So here, salts are cool still for uh, creating the, the, the cooling effect for, for your exothermic reaction. And, and uh, you'll have safer nuclear power plants that way. Although I'm not a big fan of nuclear as the highest mind, I'm trying to get rid of nuclear, big nuclear, because of uh, risk of sale of depleted uranium on the black market, etc. Uh, when uh, radioactive uh, decay happens in the environment, that inf it affects the environment. But here, let's go back to crystals. Let's not get off topic. Uh, crystals are still cool. Here, here's the crystal cell battery uh, prototype, guys. Uh, here, here is my crystal cell battery prototype, and each one of these cells uh, has has uh, a mix of 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 solid uh, electrolyte in there, and salt is one of those. So different types of salt. If you have uh, uh, Epsom salt, normal salt, uh, and uh, no salt substitute. And alum. When you combine these three things in equal parts, you create uh, an electrolyte, a solid electrolyte for the crystal cell battery, which is the future batteries that work based off of pressure. You still have the anode and the cathode exchanging uh, uh, different chemical energy. So Neil deGrasse Tyson is right. You know, uh, uh, chemical energy is is. Uh, how, how the energy is actually uh, transpiring here between the anode and the cathode, but those salts, those are helping me create a solid electrolyte between the two. Uh, 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 it's like the, the telecommunication between the two solids, you know, so that they can communicate, basically, you know. They exchange, they exchange uh, molecules from each other you see, and this is what creates your, your polarity and your power, your positive and negative. So this is the, the basics for creating a battery. You can create uh, a, a battery that isn't caustic, like lead acid batteries, yourself at home using salts, like I was saying. Have an anode and a cathode and use solid salts. So I, I mix in other things because I know about graphene you want to cook and, and create a layer of graphene over your anode and your cathode so that uh, the particles uh, in, in your anode and cathode uh, don't decay so fast, don't lose their, their 
uh, molecules so fast. You see in the exchange, so uh, in copper, you see, you see what happens to copper? It, it sulfates and it turns green. See how it's all green like that? What's happening, it, I know these uh, cells get ugly, but uh, if you contain that so that it doesn't uh, sulfate and so do it doesn't spill over its electrolyte like that and uh, encapsulate it in wax or something like this, you get something more like the Oxford Bell. So what I need to do, you see, is in encapsulate all these cells so that they, they don't leak out their electrolyte so that uh, they don't sulfate green on the outside when they're copper. Uh, the Oxford Bell has been running for uh, decades. If you have a battery that runs for decades, even if it's low power, see, uh, you're, you have the wave of the future. Uh, you can triple charge batteries without the sun now. You see, you, you can have an infinite source of energy, even though it's a low source. Hey, that can trickle charge a large battery bank that, that can have a function. And, and there's other ways of doing this, like, uh, like the tritium uh, battery, or the tritium generator is what it really is. So uh, if you have uh, one of those little pieces of tritium, they're rather expensive, but you can get them for necklaces and stuff off of eBay, right? Tritium is, a, is having an exothermic reaction in that little thing. That's what makes it glow, you see? Uh, it, it's basically uh, putting off a, a, tiny, a tiny radiation glow, right? It, and with that tiny glow, if you take calculator batteries and wrap the tritium with, the, with a different type of solar, a, a lower uh, registering solar panel, basically, like you have on a calculator, hey, that little thing of tritium will charge indefinitely for, for over 20 years plus, you see? So uh, alternative energies are the future. And Neil deGrasse Tyson cannot knock crystals because of piezoelectric crystals. You see on the roads uh, how, how certain cities and, and are, are starting to develop uh, panels that you can walk on, perhaps in the subway, perhaps in a train station, panels that you can walk on. So when you walk through the station, it's generating power with each step that you take. Well, what's creating that power? Piezoelectric crystals. So crystals, when you pressure them, uh, when, when you uh, put them under pressure, they, they create polarity, a positive and a negative. So you can actually create power with crystals. And not even Neil deGrasse Tyson can knock crystals that long, you know. We're both teaching you stuff here, though. The lowest energy state of the atoms in the lattice. So crystals are just not big radiators of energy. All right? You want something to radiate energy? So if you want to get lots of energy, what do you usually go to? You usually go to the sun. The sun radiates a ton of energy, and that's why we love solar panels. We love... Uh, capturing the different layers of the spectrum so that we can evolve the solar panel into the future. Uh, I, but here, Neil deGrasse Tyson, I have created free energy this year. Not once, but twice. How did I do it? Here, uh, take, uh, let me have uh, about 10 seconds and I'll, I'll grab the device that creates free energy here. Here, drum roll, please. Okay. This. This. Okay. You see this? 
This is free energy, everybody. Hey, Neil deGrasse Tyson. This is free energy. How is this free energy, Adam? With pressure. With vacuum physics, you see, if we had a steel barrel, we could even upsize this concept. It's a very small demo of, of how it would work. See, if you submerge this whole thing, this, this protein container, with the hose gooped on at, at a high end and a low end, if you seal it all up and it's all, all, all airtight everywhere, hey, this is a fountain that runs forever, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I have, I have uh, found a loophole uh, in thermodynamics, you see, because this runs forever. If it's airtight without a leak, yes. So now I can put micro turbines here on, on the upswing, on the one on top. Do you see? And, and it will constantly run these micro turbines as long as I have any source of water. It doesn't even have to be moving water anymore. It doesn't have to be, uh, it doesn't have to be an ocean with waves. It's not tidal electrolysis. It's, it's not your typical hydroelectric dam where they dammed the whole river unnecessarily. No, this is probably going back to like a primitive civilization in South America where they had uh, cities of water flowing forever. Do you see? We're, we're just stumbling upon the past. And if, if, uh, if you can create a city of water that flows forever without any electricity, without even using solar to bring the water up the hill, you see, uh, you hit, you've created a new type of civilization. Uh, it, free energy, free water up a hill, just like that, just by understanding this. And this is an innovation for firefighting as it's hard to get water up a hill. You know, this is the evolution after the ram pump. Do you see? So uh, we have just discovered this here in the West. And when I discovered it, I was like, ah, oh, Eureka, free energy. Because I'm a third generation electrician, always thinking about alternative uh, energy. Uh, kind of like Robert Murray Smith. I'm the other guy. <laughs> I'm like John Hutchison, you know, he made his own crystal cell batteries. Uh, he was doing it with, uh, with ammo shells, do you see? So it's not stupid to work with crystals. It's not stupid to work with salts. If you can create a battery that works off of pressure, uh, it, it can last for decades. And in fact, uh, here, Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, I, ha I have a clock in Valley that has been running for decades, okay? You want to know how it runs? The capacitor and the pendulum going back and forth. So when that pendulum goes across and it reaches its maximum uh, it, and, and has entropy, well, hey, you can kick that up again uh, and keep it, keep it kicking back uh, if you have a capacitor to move it, move it a little bit past. Do you see? So here, free energy three times, right? Uh, the vacuum steam turbine. Here's a free water heater, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh, if you have a tube at 33 feet high, it starts to steam at the top. This is vacuum physics. This is science, okay? The new science. If you have a tube that steams at the top like that, uh, because it's drawing off of that air bubble at the top with all that weight, the weight of the water wanting to go out into open space when it can't, it can't draw off that bubble. So what happens? It starts to steam up instead. Well, if you shut off the bottom after it boils, right? Here, you, you've just created a new type of turbine, the vacuum steam turbine and a free hot water heater. As long as you can have that height at 33 feet high and above. So uh, 
here's some new innovations. Uh, I created also uh, an energy window. So when you have bitter cold in the, the winter, this, is, this was your solution for, uh, for the cold nights. You see, the darkness, the, the answer to solar power as solar is only one half of the day. Well, the thermoelectric peltiers, if you run them in series, those little ceramic techs that we use to uh, make our computer processor frosty uh, back in the day when we were overclocking the Celeron 366 to 800, uh, I took one of those uh, little frosty ceramics and put them in series and, and ran them the electricity backwards. So now, uh, they're generating electricity and when you press them between glass together here you created an ambient generator just based on a differential in temperature the bitter cold outside it's always cold in the winter and you heat your house on the inside so it's always warm on the inside tuck this into your windowsill and you have a generator another uh, form of energy and uh, this is not even free energy. This is go going back to the old days. So we don't have to go back to the old days of, uh, of the, the thermoelectric window generator that you have not discovered yet, right? <laughs> See how far I am? It, it, I'm, I'm so far uh, it, uh, with everybody, it, with every nation, I'm just... Uh, I'm in my own little bubble. I'm way ahead of you guys. It's so funny. Uh, I, I, can, I can give you three types of, of, of clean energy that lasts forever, you know. Uh, and uh, you can do this type of application on the water to make a boat that runs forever. You know, even though I invented the fire boat, when you, when you bend copper pipes and you, and you heat one end under a fire and you have the other end off the back of the boat, that's the fire boat. Well, here, I've now made a boat that runs forever off of gravity itself, gravity and water, the most simple thing, the most simple, simplified way you could do it, this same concept. Just imagine if you ran this off the back of the boat instead. Do you see? And you ran this off the front. So it's sucking off the front, pushing off the back, and then using gravity in barrels in the middle of the boat. You see? So now a boat that runs forever. I'm sure the Navy will love that. You know, right? <laughs>